This week we're back to work on the tiny house renovation. After removing the roof and eventually getting down that massive ridge beam. <laughs> we're now focused on getting the new roof on. But there is a lot of prep to do before we get to that point. It looks like a bomb has gone off in here after we've taken the roof down. The sign of progress. <laughs> but before we clean it up, we have got more mess to make. These wall plates are in an absolute state. They've got mushrooms growing out of them. They're rotten completely and they're basically just falling apart. I think it goes without saying that we need to get them down. Do you need the hammer? No, I don't think so. These plates are so rotten. I'm pretty sure just with this finger, there's enough strength to get it down. Mm. <sighs> oh, that reeks. Look at this slimy guy hiding in here. Why do we actually need to take it down? Well, see here where the beam's been? Yeah. There, basically, so all of this needs to come off. There's a lot. So the wall plates were buried in amongst a load of kind of crumbly mortar uh, and then had stonework put on top of that. So because we've taken the wall plate off, I'm also taking out all of that crumbly concrete as well, just because it's falling everywhere. It's really not a good solid base to put the new roof on. So we're getting everything back, getting the walls nice and level, starting afresh. <laughs> We've been hiding inside, drinking coffee for about the last, what, hour now? Yeah. <laughs> because the rain has just been torrential. It's been raining so heavy all through the night, all this morning. It's showing no sign of stopping anytime soon. No, it's eased off a little bit, so we've decided to get the jackets on and we've still got to make progress. So we're back down, we've got a couple of shovels. We need to clean up the absolute mess in here. That we've worked really hard to create. <laughs> some high-tech technology we're dealing with over here to keep the camera dry. My gloves are squelching, they're so wet. We're keeping hold of that old granite for when we need to rebuild the wall. Okay, so that's the room cleared now of most of the debris. We've still got a load more mess to make in here, so it's not a perfect job, but it's enough that we can now move scaffolding around and we can easily move around without having to walk over, you know, big piles of rubble. The rain got so heavy for the last half an hour, so every piece of clothing that we're wearing is absolutely drenched underwear included and there are now gigantic puddles all over the floor of this room. 
we're just trying to get out the thickest of this water, but we are expecting another storm any time now, despite this sunshine at this present second. But we don't want to leave too much standing water in here, saturating the ground even more. So this is the reality of building work and renovation work. Just what seems like endless new piles of things that need recycling, things that need disposing of. Just today alone, I mean, that's two, four, six, about 15 bags there that we filled up with rubble and hardcore that's gonna need disposing of. So I think probably a trip to the local recycling center is gonna be necessary soon. Okay, so we're back doing more prep work on these walls today. The next step is to tackle the two gable ends. So because the old roof was built slightly different to the new roof we're going to put on, there's a height difference between the front and the back walls and the gable end walls of about 160, 170 mil. Now what Victoria and I want to do is we want to put a ring beam that's gonna go all around the whole building on top of the walls to tie all the walls in together. In order to do that, we want the walls to be level so we can get a form on. Now, obviously in this build, height of the roof is paramount. We can't really afford to lose a single centimeter, particularly at the apex, because that's where the stairs are gonna come up. And the last thing I wanna be doing is crouching down at the top of the stairs. So what we need to do at the moment is effectively alter the shape of the gable a little bit and change the angle slightly because we want the peak to stay exactly where it is, but we need to take some off at the bottom end where it joins the wall. So what we're gonna do is kind of roughly mark out a line, a new line where it will go from the top down to the wall and that'll give me a rough indication of where I need to take the stones out on the gable. It's a little bit frustrating this process because we want to be building up, not taking stuff away. But at this point of doing the prep, it's necessary and you know, you can't make an omelet without cracking a few eggs. away at the stone walls I thought I'd just pop up to the garden and do a few little jobs with my coffee <laughs> So I planted these tomato plants last week and you can see they're really leggy and a little bit weak. After last week's video, some kind people left me some comments about how to remedy this and improve the health of these tomato plants. Apparently, you can bury it very, very deeply and where it's got these nodules, they actually turn into new root systems which allow the plant to get more nutrients and have better better feet in the soil so it's more stable in the wind. So thank you for the tips because I really, really do appreciate them and I really need every bit of help I can get when it comes to the garden. Well, this makes me very happy. I've just found a lovely little worm in our soil. We are a bit worried about the quality and condition of our soil, so it makes me very happy that Mr. Worm here has made it his home. I'm gonna put him back very carefully because I don't want to chop him in two with my trowel. 
I had my first attempt at trying to propagate plants last week with these rosemary and lavender and they look all right at the moment but apparently they're going to struggle to actually produce any roots because they're spending too much of their energy trying to maintain the leaves so again thank you for letting me know in the comments about how to improve this method and it's very simple I basically need to strip off way more of the leaves than I have already done Well, it was going pretty slowly, but just had an absolute result because, oh, I've just got something in my eye. Yeah, so for some reason, this slope on this side of the, on this gable is lower than the one on the other side, which I can't really wrap my head around. But yeah, I'm very happy about that because I've had to take off a lot of material from that other side to get it to the point we need. Obviously we're gonna, build it back up again once the ring beam's in and it's gonna go, the stone's gonna go around the ring beam. But this side being lower, I don't know if you can see the string line, but there's barely anything I have to take off here. So fingers crossed, it's the same situation on the front. And then realistically, I'll be done within the hour. So let's hope so. So these are the ferns that are beside the tiny house and they're getting completely out of control to be honest. We've needed to pull them and get rid of these ferns for a few weeks now but the week before last our strimmer actually stopped working and we've not had a chance to mend it yet. So unfortunately I am going to have to do it by hand. I can't put it off any longer so time to get cracking. <laughs> This is a hot job, but so far so good. The ferns are coming up pretty easily and I'm making decent progress. I am feeling a little twinge of guilt though because this is one of Poppy's absolute favorite hunting grounds. She absolutely adores exploring and finding all kinds of creatures in here. However, I'm sure she'll get over it. After all, she has got the run of the place and there are plenty of other areas for her to explore. So the gables have now had the stone brought down to the level we need. The next step is actually need to get the air compressor and just get rid of all of the loose debris up there before we start putting any fresh mortar or anything on it. We've also in the process of sorting these gables out made an absolute mess in here again. It's like another bomb has gone off. So yet another big clear up job is needed. Victoria went out the other day, bought a load more rubble bags so we can fill all those up. But before we crack on and clear up yet more rubble, we've got a birthday to celebrate. So today is Teddy's seventh birthday or 49 in dog years. That's right, buddy, you're a middle-aged man. You're so handsome. It's crazy really to think that he's turning seven today because kind of almost feels just like yesterday when we first got him. We adopted him when he was seven months old from a rescue. He was just this tiny little scruffy but very cute pup and it's crazy to think how far he's come in that time from just this wild little street dog puppy into what he is now where he's just so much calmer, so much more affectionate, just a lovely, lovely dog. And although he's a big, big, middle-aged man. He'll always be our little baby. Mwah! Won't you, bud? Good boy. 